On today's episode, Idra's 9,000 ton gigapress for the Cybertruck arrives at Giga Texas. Tesla slashes prices in China to keep on top of the Asian market, and they revolutionize supercharger design in Denmark. On January 6th, prolific Tesla reporter Joe Tetmeyer caught a delivery of two very large Idra stamped wooden boxes to Giga Texas with his drone. Not long after that, two more Idra packages were spotted by another drone operator, Brad Sloan. Given the markings, it's not too much of a stretch to think that these crates contain the pieces for the long-awaited 9,000-ton Gigapress that Tesla will be using to produce their Cybertruck this year. But there's more. Here's a shot of one of the 9,000-ton Gigapress parts crated up at Idra HQ in Italy, taken in October of 2022. Remember the second group of crates captured by Brad Sloan's flyover? Looks awfully similar, right? Add to that this long package here. This is likely the giant rods that the dies sit on and move across so they can't be broken down into smaller components. And then there's the timing. As early as the beginning of 2022, we've known that Tesla was aiming to have Cybertruck production begin in at least a limited capacity by the first quarter of 2023. And in the Q3 2022 earnings call back in October, CEO Elon Musk confirmed that the company was primed to begin production at Giga Texas in the new year. And we don't have to just take Elon's word for that. On December 18th, bills of landing were discovered by Twitter sleuth at Gregor Truck that showed Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas had ordered 66 new KUKA production robots. These bots are produced in Germany and are Tesla's robot of choice for all of their production lines. So while 66 bots isn't a gigantic amount when compared to Giga Texas's Model Y production lines, that number should certainly be enough to get the new Cybertruck line up and running. Connecting all of those dots makes a picture of a Giga Texas that is about to start calibrations for the first casting attempts of their Cybertruck. And just around the right time for Musk's predictions too. It's likely going to take a little bit for Tesla and Idris technicians to set up the Monster Gigapress as well as the KUKA robots for the new production line. We're not sure exactly how the press was packaged, but it certainly seems like they'd need one or two more big crates to contain the entire machine. Regardless, with the Cybertruck team still in their tooling phase, where they prepare the specifications and procedures that will be used in production, everything should line up nicely. But in looking over the IDRA Group's LinkedIn page for that shot of the Gigapress crate, we also ran across this. In this post made on January 9th, we see a new, operational 9,000 ton press being tested on the IDRA floor. The caption reads, another 900T ready for shipping to Asia. Like last time, IDRA didn't give any mention of who exactly this press was for, but given no one else is currently using presses this big, it's not a huge leap to imagine that this one is bound for Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai. But it's one thing to guess that a press that's only been made for Tesla is likely heading to their Asian factory. It's another thing entirely to guess what for. There's been no announcements on plans to produce the Cybertruck in Shanghai, although it's not out of the realm of possibility. Giga Shanghai has been a powerhouse of a facility for Tesla this year, smashing all sorts of production records despite several shutdowns even supporting other Tesla factories. But there is the possibility that a press this size could be used for a new third platform that Elon and Tesla execs talked about in the Q3 2022 earnings call. In response to an investor question, Musk and his team revealed that Tesla is working on their next generation vehicle platform and revealed some key points. They said that they were aiming for this new platform to be half the cost of the Model 3 and Y, that they expect it to exceed the production of both, and pivotally, it will be smaller than the other two models as well. Rumors have been flying around for some time about a potential $25,000 vehicle in development, but this is the only real evidence we have for that. And while it doesn't confirm a new model like that is coming, 
it does line up with the potential for a smaller vehicle whose production would be made much more efficient by using another 9,000 ton gigapress. At this point though, that is all speculation. Aside from Tesla and Elon's comments in the earnings call and a shiny new gigapress that's apparently off to Asia, there's nothing to be said with any certainty. It is, however, exciting to see big packages with IDRA marked on the sides rolling up to Giga Texas. We can't wait to see the first test castings. Tesla's been making bold moves in China over the last week. As the EV company dramatically slashed the cost of the new Model 3s and Ys in their Asian market. The Chinese market has access to both the rear-wheel drive and dual-motor performance versions of the Model 3 sedan and the rear-wheel drive dual-motor long-range and the dual-motor performance versions of the Model Y crossover. Currently, the price drops look to be around two to 4000 US dollars, but some of the entries are more drastic, like the Model Y long-range dual-motor, which started at about 52100 US dollars and is now about 45,100 USD. For even more context, Tesla sells the Model Y long range dual motor in the US for $65,990. We all expect products to sell for different amounts in different markets, but what is it about the China market that has Tesla keeping the prices so low there? It seems unlikely to be just a lack of sales. The China Passenger Car Association published some numbers for Tesla China's sales back in December. And while it showed that Tesla China's December sales of 55,796 had taken an almost 44% dive from November's record of 100,291 units, the real news here is that in total, Giga Shanghai sold 710,865 vehicles in 2022 alone which is about 54% of Tesla's total global sales for that year. A dip in sales during December doesn't change the fact that Tesla is doing really well in the Chinese market. But they are not in a secure position at the top of the pile. Local electric vehicle competitor BYD actually outsold Tesla's Model 3 in China during December with their SEAL sedan, which reportedly has similar specifications to the Model 3, but was at a lower price point. Now, it's not clear just yet if the intention is to simply compete with local manufacturers like BYD, or to just get sales numbers up in general. But a drop in price like this can only help Tesla stay on top this year. With the changes in charging technology over the last couple of years, it's understandable that Tesla would need to do some experimentation with how their charging stations should be laid out. In a January 5th post on their Tesla charging Twitter page, the EV company shows off one of the newer configurations in Denmark that's hoping to add a little efficiency to their charge stations. In an overhead drone shot, we see a small parking area that's obviously been readied for testing. No parking lines or signage has been posted yet, but we can see a number of supercharger stations arrayed in a new plan. Normally, electric vehicle charging stations are added to older parking lots or are arranged in an out of the way location. We can still see that same design strategy with the superchargers that are on the top left and right of the image here. These stations would require a driver to nose or back up to the curb, and it's what we usually see with charging stations. We even see it with Tesla stations that were built to purpose like the one in North Bergen, New Jersey. Now there's nothing really wrong with this sort of configuration, especially since it's very easy to add to an existing parking lot, something every designer considers. But if you look back to the shot from Denmark, you can start to see the new philosophy for charger placement. The supercharger can be used on both sides. So the team in Denmark have arranged these stations so that they line up with where the parking lot lines will eventually be. This allows for one station to service two users at once, having the amount of chargers needed. But that's not all, because following this idea, Tesla has also placed chargers in the center of the lot, utilizing pull-through parking spaces to do the same thing and maximizing the available maneuvering space for vehicles. Pull-through parking spaces are used when the design doesn't call for a blocker, like when a central curb supports a lighting system, or if the lot owners need to cut down on slow-speed accidents in their lot caused by pull-through users. 
But in terms of charging, the use case changes. No one is really going to be speeding through the central spaces here as they're for charging. So that's not a huge concern. Parking lot design is an exercise in using the area you have to make a plan that flows well. This new design seems to check all the boxes for a location where people are going to be pulling in for a 15 to 20 minute charge and pulling through to the exit. And it uses half the charge stations that other configurations have in the past. And Denmark isn't the only location using this new design. There's a shot here from Exeter in the UK and another from a parking garage in Roma, Italy that utilizes this very difficult layout. There aren't a whole lot of ways to configure a parking lot, so we're likely going to see more of this design going forward. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.